I'm Mike Bradner, and this is Capital Views, and we have with us uh, Professor uh, Glenn Wright from the University of Alaska Southeast. And Glenn, you run the Legislative Intern Program. That's right, which, for the University uh, of Alaska. is an amazing opportunity for young people. Tell us how it works. So um, UAS takes students from all three universities, Anchorage, Fairbanks, and Southeast, and we bring students down to Juneau for the duration of a legislative session. We help to place them with a legislative office, um, a state senator or a state representative, and they are put to work essentially full time and they're treated like regular legislative staff. And so they get to do all of the things that legislative staff do. They do, um, uh, you know, sort of typical intern things, but they also do um, all of the things that you would be involved in if you were uh, working professionally, including things like drafting and moving legislation. And they grow into the job. I mean, you start, what am I supposed to do? Exactly. And you end up probably very proficient. There's a, yeah. there's a really steep learning curve, um, but we also get some very proficient students, and so they oftentimes come into the, the, uh, the internship very well prepared. Now, w what's their obligation to you? Do they have to produce certain materials for you? Yeah, so the, the, the program is, is essentially includes two components. So we have um, this work component, which is you know a full uh, work week, a full regular work week, where they work for their legislative office, and then they also attend um, a seminar with me that consists of all the things that you would expect would take place in a normal academic course at the upper level uh, for undergraduates. So we, we hold classes at the moment, we actually hold them up in the Capitol building, and uh, we meet weekly, roughly weekly, f for three hours in the evenings, and then they do some, some academic research that includes things like a, like a research paper and carrying out some research with the, with the legislature. So how do they support themselves when they're here? The, we've been fortunate over the years. The, the program has uh, been able to offer students a stipend. So most students that are admitted into the program receive a, a $5,000 stipend for uh, working uh, with us for the, the session. And then students from Anchorage and Fairbanks also receive a travel allowance, which is a couple hundred dollars and helps them cover their airfare and whatnot. Do you have students from the far-flung campuses? Every once in a while. Um, recently, um, most of our students have come from Anchorage and Juneau, interestingly, or maybe oddly, but we do occasionally get students from places like, um, you know, like southwestern Alaska and, and, uh, and some of the branch campuses. And s some stay on as legislative aides. Yeah, we've, we've actually had great luck in, um, in helping to place our students uh, professionally after they complete the experience. So around half or maybe 40% of our program graduates go on to work as uh, professional legislative staff. And recently, last year, we actually did a survey of the full-time staff that are working in the building during the session. We were able to get almost a complete population of staffers, and we found that about 20% of current staffers are actually graduates of the internship program. And you succeeded Cl Clive Th uh, Thomas. Who That's right, yeah. So you've been running the program Couple of years. This is my fifth year. Yeah, yeah. But the program, this is the program has been going for 29 years now. So the source, um, I mean, you, you get recommendations from like Fairbanks and Anchorage and the professors there that people should, you know, give this a try. That's right. And um, the um, some of the others, where do they go? That do they take their training somewhere where it's of value and. In terms of um, students that graduate from the program that yeah. don't go to work with I mean, the legislature. I mean, I would think in business and so on, people who have a relationship with the legislature to have people who uh, they're not blown away by the system. Yeah, we, we about uh, maybe uh, maybe maybe fifty percent of our students graduate from the program feeling really good about our political system, and then maybe thirty percent uh, graduate uh, deeply cynical and <laughs> disillusioned. <laughs> yeah, uh, but we we wind up, um, you know, graduates from the program go in a, in, in a million different directions, 
And so in recent years, we've had um, students that have gone to work for, for government, uh, you know, in, in, at, at all levels and kind of in every conceivable way. We've had students that have gone to work for DOT and Fish and Game, things like that. Then we have a lot of students that, that decide to pursue an academic track. So we do have some students that will graduate from our program near the end of their undergraduate uh, uh, course of study. They'll go on to graduate school. Uh, and then, you know, there are, there are students that move in different directions, sort of out into the private world and whatnot. Now, you're a product of UAF. That's right, and I'm actually a product of the internship program also. Are you? That's I, I, very interesting. Yeah, I, I, I interned in the year 2000. I was one of the students that graduated from the program uh, deeply disillusioned, and I decided I wasn't interested in politics, but I decided I really didn't enjoy studying politics, so that's how I wound up teaching poli-sci at UAS. Well, a little cynicism is basic to perhaps government. That's what keeps people watching the government. I think it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's helpful to have a little bit of cynicism when you're, when you're studying it uh, as a profession. <laughs> it's um, somehow, I mean, the system, you look and it's, you say the, the system is terrible. It hardly works. Nobody listens to me. But yet, in the end, when we have great crises, uh, government usually rises to the, they have to, that's what we have. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and um, the government of the state of Alaska has a remarkable history of dealing with crises and also dealing with the, the benefits that we received as Alaskans over the years. So I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic these days. Well, Professor Wright, it's been a pleasure to have you. I'm Mike Bradner, and this is Capital Views. Thank you.